Welcome back to another video. My name is Justin, and today we're going to be uh, looking through the stock market blood. Um, looking here at the one-week graph on uh, the heat map for the S&P 500, we can note that it is red almost everywhere. The only things that are not red are going to be consumer defensives, a little bit of healthcare, a little bit of energy, but otherwise it is broad-based selling. We've got chips leading tech and tech leading spy. So as we look at that, we know that right now the market is under significant pressure. And um, just looking here at our first chart, which is going to be ES. Um, we can, and by the way, before I forget, we're trying a new format today. Again, I'm trying just, just to do full screen uh, for the charts so you guys can see the charts a little bit more clear. If you like that, please drop a comment and let us know if you prefer it or if you like seeing my big, beautiful face. Um, otherwise, we're also going to talk about Roku and DKNG at the end of the video, both of them having pretty sizable moves lower in the double digit range. Um, first thing to look at here is going to be the ES chart where we can see that we are still pointing down. So we should not be, we should not be surprised when we what? keep pointing down. Um, as of right now, we got some pretty aggressive headlines out of Russia and Ukraine that are driving us lower here in pre-market. Um, we can see that move happening here fairly fast with the leg down. So we were uh, stabilizing all yesterday, moved higher on headlines, moved down on headlines. What does this feel like? It feels like the US-China trade talk resumption where we move up, we move down based on headlines. Today is monthly OPEX. Remember that. What does it mean? Today is, is payday. Um, there's going to be lots of money expiring, and it really matters where we're going to close out at 4 o'clock. So last thing to point out here is just that SPY on the one-week chart is still in a dominant head and shoulders pattern. Um, when we look at this one here, it's pretty obvious to tell that we are what? We're in a bearish pattern. We have uh, three weeks where we have really strong selling with upper wicks. So penetrate the head and shoulders neckline, sell it. Penetrate again, sell it. Close up the low of the week, just over the 50. And now this last week, they sold this baby off hard. We only made it to the relative low here at roughly 448.92 or our, our November low. And uh, that's it. Uh, slammed it right down here. We were a little bit higher in pre-market. Now we're basically set to open up flat here, 50 cents higher. So what does that mean? We're we're below the 50 weekly moving average. Um, this is exactly what I didn't want to see when I did my weekend video. So where are we? We're currently in bear territory. Remembering that the break even for the 450 straddle for today is 435. Um, the low of the week so far is 435.34. Why? They need to at least attempt to salvage not paying out. So anything above 435 for today would mean that um, they're going to be paying back the 450 straddle that expires. They're not going to be giving their own money. And as I have a quick look here at uh, what is there for open interest and volume, uh, actually, I can't see it. I'm going to skip it. So that's what we have to uh, to contemplate here. Are we actually bearish? Um, until the bulls show up and break the chart bullish, this is bearish. We have three weeks of back-to-back -back selling, and Russia was not the dominant reason why we took the first leg lower on these moves. So what does that mean? There is more brewing here than just Russia and Ukraine. The technical price action is telling us that we have to be very careful right now. So if we're not able to close above 438.5, it means that we're closing below the 50 weekly. We are already below the 200 daily and we are solidly in bear, toward, bear territory. Why? Look at the chart. Look at that hard rejection off the 200 here. Pure pokes a little bit above it, only able to get to the real bodies, slam it. So again, below the 200 daily, below the 50 weekly, that is a 100% bearish. Uh, if you look here to our weekly chart on QQQ, um, again, or the uh, the tech sector, what do we get? We got a massive megaphone and we're throttling here at the lower end with a what? A rejection on the 50 weekly. So two massive upper wicks here, another inverted hammer, rejecting off the 50 after not, able, not, able, not being able to hold it twice in a row. Um, this just looks like a dead cat bounce. Um, and now we're right back down to where we were. This does not look pretty. Um, so where we go from here, I'm not entirely sure but the pressure is definitely on these bulls. And uh, I think it's important for us to keep in mind that um, there was a lot of potential for us to go a lot lower this week. So even though we're red, it is not actually all that bad. Uh, what we do have is potential, potential for us to go lower. So again, looking here at NQ, we can see that our double downtrend was also respected yesterday. And where did we settle? Right on the uptrend. Uh, finally, two more assets I wanna look at today are gonna be BTC and Ethereum, because why? They're doing something bad here. So again, stomped below the 50, uh, 50 daily, and what? Not able to even dead cat bounce to test it. That's a big stomp yesterday, down about 7%. We got our death cross here. Oof, better watch out. 
Um, I'd also note that we are also still below our relative low from the plunge that we had back in early December, and that is not a good look. Um, everything is selling off that's risk related. Uh, on the flip side here, we also have uh, Ethereum, again, below the 50 daily with a death cross, barely able to dead cat bounce. This looks terrible. Looking over here at gold though, um, XAU, USD, um, we can note that gold is actually breaking bullish. So looking here on a weekly chart, uh, what I'm noticing is that, first of all, look at the volume, right? Volume's coming in massively here. We invalidated the head and shoulders pattern. We penetrated the $1,900 area, and we've not seen that price since uh, May and uh, basically January of 2021. So what does this tell you? All systems go. Market is ready to tank. All we need is the technical price action to confirm it. Um, and what would that mean? It means we're likely going to be revisiting the lows that we saw set last month. Where is that? 420. All right, that's my five minute review. Um, there's lots of potential for today as well. We have Fed speakers who are going to be on deck. Um, I believe we got Waller. Yeah, we got Waller, uh, Williams, uh, Brainerd, right? So we got three more Fed heads today. I don't know what they're going to say, but I don't suspect it's going to be anything different than what we've already heard this week. Awesome. All right, Mason, do you want to come on and uh, do your charts, please? That would there be fantastic. Go. Yes. So got the NASDAQ chart here. And um, I don't know if how many of you guys read what I posted yesterday in my Slack post, but I said if we couldn't, if we could close above 370 yesterday, uh, 14,370, it's likely that we'd crawl up into that uh, the rest of the day. We actually rejected. We closed below on the first candle. We tried to bounce off the next support, rejected right at uh, 14,370, and then went straight to 151, like I mentioned, 14,151. Um, the reason for that is because once we lost 14,370, very unlikely for buyers to show up here. They're looking for a better deal. They'll take the next shot lower. Um, it's just a probability thing in the market. Um, we bounced off this level. We sold off on Putin headlines. Um, what I would be cautious about going into the long weekend is the head and shoulders here on the two to four hour chart. Um, it's not pretty on the NASDAQ. There is definitely room to the downside here. So make sure you're ending your week on a high note. Prepare yourself. We have had earnings like Roku and DKNG come out. Negative reactions, no surprises there because every reaction for tech earnings has been negative the last how long? Um, so yeah, just be careful today, guys. We saw the head and shoulders here. We need to get back about 14,370 to be even mildly bullish in my opinion. And yeah, the risk is still to the downside until it's not. Um, so yeah, stay safe. That's all I got from Jay. All right, I'll take back over here. And um, just before I forget, we do have a sponsor to briefly go through at the end of the video, Molecule Holdings Inc., which now has their Canajo uh, available in stores. So we're going to go through that in a moment. But first, we're going to go through and talk about some of these earnings reactions here. So looking at Roku, again, a Kathy Wood uh, top holding, we can see the stock is down 28% here and after, uh, sorry, in pre-market. So um, the stock has been absolutely obliterated. And um, what we have to keep in mind here is that, again, it is Friday. I think that what we want to try to do, like we say every week, is try to end the week on a high note. And um, if you're in a name um, like this that is way down, again, the trade is now bad. How bad it's going to get us up to you. And um, looking over here at DKNG as well, again, also down 16% here. It's not a pretty look. Um, earnings were actually not that bad. They were actually a beat. Um, but the reaction is negative based on the outlook. So they both, uh, they both did not provide robust guidance, which means that People are just selling it off. Why? Because Kathy owns it and it's an easy target. Um, so what we want to look at here is if you're thinking of buying these, please just keep in mind of the round numbers. 105, 100. Uh, can't hold those areas? Don't buy. It's due for a dead can bounce, if not uh, more than that. But it does not mean it's going to be a guarantee. The broader market is under significant pressure right now. So for these names to rally, what we're going to want to look for is going to be a reaction that we're going to see um, at the end of the day, where we get a feedback, something similar to this, like on Paramount, where it goes all the way down, but manages to actually snap back to show there are dip buyers showing up, like on Paramount here. We look over to shop. Um, the gap down wasn't enough. <laughs> it gapped down flush to the low of the day, and, that, and then yesterday it flushed again. Why? Because it closed near the low of the day, which means selling was not exhausted. So even though this looks like a capitulation day, it wasn't. Why? We closed near the low of the day on a gap down, and the sellers did not exhaust themselves. Um, now it looks like they're exhausting because we're opening up roughly flat. Uh, but the other one was uh, Roblox. So Roblox looks similar to where it ha has an inside bar. So again, slam down. They try to buy it up. It got slammed into the close. It's now, now it's an inside bar. 
This is where we get interested in buying it. Why? We have established areas here. There's a tiny little pennant. If it's able to break this candle bullish, that's an inside bar break bull. If it breaks bearish, that's an inside bar break bear. Why does this matter? Because once we get through the inside bar and through the gap, we got a whole bunch of profit to make here, 10 bucks. So trying to catch it at 53 up to 65 is not as good as catching at about 57 and riding it up here to the upside. That is my personal opinion, which means that you're not going to know what type of pattern is going to get formed on Roku or on DKNG until after we get today's printed close. And then early next week is when you're going to want to get in. So again, negative uh, 27% is definitely an extreme move. Is it enough? I don't know. All right, shifting gears here, we're going to talk about our sponsor briefly as well. This is Molecule Holdings, Inc. They continue their BC expansion. They currently have their Canajo, which Mason and I have both talked about, expanding into BC. So we can now actually purchase the Canago Express Spice anywhere in British Columbia. I'm a little bit uh, landlocked right now, which means that it's hard for me to actually travel around. But I am looking at purchasing and trying some of this for myself. Again, this is a, uh, a cannabis product, which includes... Um, uh, Caffeine in it, right? Uh, espresso. So we can also look at that chart briefly here because it is actually doing quite well. Um, again, you can find this under the uh, the CSC or the Canadian Securities Exchange under, under the ticker symbol MLCL. And their website is molecule.ca. The stock has been advancing on the news. So um, again, uh, are they going to be able to keep advancing? Not 100% sure, but it looks like what we talked about during the company uh, profile is starting to materialize. So there we go. That is it for today. Anything you want to add on here, Mason? No, just make sure to end the week on a high note. Like Justin always talks about, mind your risk. It's not easy out there. Um, the chop is real. It's the, probably the biggest risk right now. So, yeah, just be careful and don't don't bet the farm. Keep some chickens and some hens. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes, yeah, so, again, one more time, just remember that um, if this pattern is going to materialize, you just don't want to be in a position where you are sweating over the weekend. You want to want, want to be what? And you're going to on a high note, re resetting for next week. And if the charts tell you that it is time to buy, then you buy on the early signs of reversal. So um, right now, that's going to be on the 50 weekly. And what I would be personally looking for, again, to make it very simple for you to have a call to action here, I'd be looking for a weekly higher low on SPY. Where? At 438. So that's where I would want to buy. As the 50 MA starts curling over, I would want to buy the weekly higher low if we're going bullish. And where's our upside? back up to this 454 area. So let the higher low form next week. And if the low breaks, hop out. Wish you all good luck. And we will see you guys for our regular weekend videos tomorrow. Wish you all the best of luck. Happy Friday.